Officers deal with high risk situations in everything that they do. People don't think about it that officers are dealing with a situation that they don't know going into it. They don't know who these people are, whether it be from a vehicle stop to a building search to talking with somebody on a sidewalk to you know helping somebody on a vehicle crash. Anybody, we, we don't know who these people are until we get there, until we start talking to them, until we identify them. So the high risk is there every time that an officer is encountering somebody. Uh, several months ago, Do It Best Corporation offered uh, their warehouse to us for training purposes. It's inside, it's climate controlled, and there's lots of area. So uh, with Assistant Chief Fields, we, we organized this training event that uh, occurred over two weekends. Uh, it was countywide from Cape Girardeau County Sheriff's Department, Jackson Police Department, Cape Girardeau Police Department, and uh, CMO DPS officers came down and went through these seven circuits of training, which is seven, seven different training areas, um, focusing on high priority, high impact, and, uh, and basically high threat level to an officer. Uh, we conducted, like I said, seven different circuits, uh, including building searches, stairwell clearing, emergency medic pack, weapon retention, uh, searching and handcuffing of suspects, and then what's called force on force as well as high-risk vehicle stop. Um, building searching and stairwell clearing is, is one very risky situation for an officer to go into, whether it be in a warehouse or whether it be in a residence. They are dealing with um, an unknown. They're, they don't know what's behind that door. They don't know what's around the corner. They don't know what's up those or down those stairs. So dealing with those situations are something that officers have to take into account every time and every place that they go. And so you know we were able to utilize um, Jackson police officers and, and a Cape Girardeau police officer during building searches and stairwell clearing uh, to show the best tactics, to show you know how to move through a hallway, how to move into a room, how to uh, you know look in certain areas and, and search those areas to make sure that there is no threat to the officer or to the citizen that they were there for. Another circuit that we went through that officers went through um, is was for training for the use of a medic pack, an emergency medical pack that officers are now wearing on them all the time, under their uniform, on their vest. This emergency medic pack was purchased with restitution funds from Cape Girardeau County um, for all the officers. Inside these medic packs are tourniquets, um, uh, gloves, things like that, and these are for an officer if they are injured in the line of duty. Um, you know, there's been a lot of uh, attention given to officers and how many officers are injured every year, um, whether it be from a, a gun or, or some other weapon. You know, we, we felt that it was very important to address that situation because up until this point, without the CLERF funds, we would not be able to have been able to afford to purchase these uh, several thousand dollars worth of emergency medical packs for these officers. Officers were trained on how to use these tourniquets, how to use the quick clot that's in these medic packs to stop bleeding. Um, it was addressed uh, more so as basically an officer is in a fight. He is been active. He is actively dealing with a with a suspect and has been injured. Um, how he can address himself, how he can address an injury on himself or address an injury on a fellow officer while they're on the scene together. These emergency medic packs were, um, are, are going to be vital in, in if a, a situation arises where an officer is injured. Yeah. These medic packs came about by uh, one of our police officers, Rich McCall. He did a couple of uh, private security tours over in Afghanistan. And he realized over there that these military officers were carrying a small medic pack with them all the time for the sheer fact of what happens if. What happens if they are injured? What happens if they need to administer first aid? So he brought that knowledge to us and said, hey, let's look at something that the officers can carry with them all the time. Not in the car, not in their bag, something on them. Because if an officer is in a firefight or does have, you know, is shot at, he's not gonna have time to go back to his car. He's gonna need something on him to administer that first aid to himself or to a fellow officer. These are another step to give the officer the tools to survive. And 
dealing with people, we are searching people, we're handcuffing people, we're having to worry about officer safety all the time. When we're dealing with people, that, that is some of the most dangerous and some of the most um, uh, intense times and can be the, some of the greatest threats. So a couple of our circuits that we went through was weapon retention and searching and handcuffing of suspects. Uh, the weapon retention included ground fighting. Um, you know, an instructor showed you know what an officer can do to maintain control of his weapon, whether it be in his holster, out of his holster. Uh, if they're on the ground, if he's on his back, if he's on his belly, if you know he's ambushed from behind, if he's you know, uh, you know what happens if if somebody if we're in a large crowd and somebody tries to grab one or grab our gun, or if you know we're fighting with somebody and they try to take our gun from us to use it against us, you know that's that is a huge threat. What's good techniques? What's good officer safety for that officer while he's searching someone, while he is handcuffing them? You know, where should he stand? How should he stand? You know, what's the best possible way that he can get these people in custody, in control, and take that threat out of the equation? With high-risk vehicle stops, you know, we were uh, working with the officers on what's the best position what's the best place for them to be, and what's the best, um, uh, the best commands, and what's the best information, and how can that officer you know, relay that information to other officers, as well as gain compliance from the suspects. Um, High-risk vehicle stops takes a lot of space, it takes a lot of uh, area because we do utilize cars because that's the whole premise behind the training with the high-risk vehicle stop. So it was great to have the indoor portion of the warehouse uh, where we could park these vehicles inside and utilize that open area for these high-risk vehicle stops. That there is somebody else in that room with a simunition simulated firearm that is ready to shoot at them. Uh, officers, uh, we, we did use some pain compliance, they didn't wear their vest and they, uh, we used some airsoft guns uh, during this training and they were actively shooting at each other. Um, lots of officers were, uh, you know, received some stings and some whelps and some marks, but it was an eye-opening experience for these officers to say, hey, you know, what I did here may not have been the best movement, it may not have been the best, you know, uh, way to approach this barricade or to approach this wall or to approach this hallway. And it was, it, these instructors were showing these officers how to maneuver, how to walk, what's the safest way for him to get from point A to point B when there is a known threat that he is going to encounter at some point. And he may not know when that threat is or where that threat is, but there is one there. And so, you know, officers were, uh, you know, engaging each other just minute after minute after minute. And, and it really made them see that, you know, even there is that threat there, we can still function. We can still do, use these tactics through the building searching and the stairwell clearing and all these things combined, um, you know, tactics come down to dictate you know what an officer is going to do and each one of these circuits it, it was dealing with directly with that dealing with possible threats dealing with um, tactics maneuvers and how to maintain officer safety at all given at all given points so after three three days of training um, you know over two weekends about 150 officers from all over Cape Girardeau County, you know, we realized and we continue to realize that training is the most important aspect of any of all law enforcement. You know, officers have to train by scenarios. You know, sitting in a classroom and learning the legal aspects and being educated is, is just as important, but we have to be able to do this scenario-based training. And the warehouse offered us a great opportunity and a great location to do all these different, from from you know hand to hand to using vehicles to using simunition. It was a great situation and a great experience for our officers and, and all officers 
to go through these scenarios um, to feel the threat, to feel the what ifs, to feel the possibilities of, of being injured and how to deal with that injury if necessary. You know, we, you know, Clerf bought these these med these medic packs and, and immediately officers know that, you know, we, we're better trained now. We need to continue this training, we need to continue training like this and encourage our officers, encourage all police officers uh, to train and, and to worry about, you know, dangerous situations. Uh, we need to remind ourselves every day that um, the threats are there.